second knit along. Yeah. Thanks, Martin, for agreeing to do a second knit along. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I think the first one actually was really successful. Yes, very successful. Yes, I'm been quite overwhelmed by the response actually. Yeah, I think um, when you've actually met retailers and consumers alike, they've all kind of had a lot of enthusiasm for it. Yes, and still have. I'm still getting really good feedback, even nearly two years down the line, so that's been great. Oh, wow, was yeah. it two years ago? Nearly two years, yes, yeah, since the last one was launched. So, yeah, it's been brilliant. Time flies. And this is, <laughs> this is the, um, the, new, the next knit along one. It is, it is, yes. Um, and I th actually, this is a slightly different though, isn't it? Because we're not going to do it as actually as, as, as a secret knit along this time. Uh, I believe not, no. No, people will get an idea of, of first of um, what hmm. the squares look like and how they're put together as well. Um, because we've got some colour work as well appearing in this. Hmm. In, in this particular one, so they need to have some idea of yeah, how the I'm, colours work. I mean, personally, I do, I'm not too keen on surprises. The idea of my husband doing a surprise party or something yes. like that for me, I, I like to know where I am. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, I think most people are like that, especially our knitters. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's quite an investment in time. And it is, money, yeah, it's yeah. a huge investment, actually, um, mm. particularly in, in, as you say, the investment and, and the actual knitting of it, and particularly mm. in this one, because you've got the um, colour work which is more time consuming. And I guess a lot of people actually do um, knit these kind of um, Afghan throws actually for gifts if they've got a, a son going off to university. Yes, or, yes exactly um, and this has been designed with that in mind because it comes in four colourways so uh, we've got a blue colourway here yeah. which would be ideal for a, a son going to university mm. um, and then we've got uh, quite a zingy spice colour way. Really autumny colours, beautiful. Look, yes, yeah, yeah. all the sort of lovely pure mm, rusted autumny mm. colours. And then we've got a very nice fresh green mm. colour way. So that's for your kind of gardener, country-minded yeah. person. Yeah, and people who are particularly who are green lovers mm, as well, yeah. nature green lovers. And then we've or just, even vegetarians. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got a very uh, calm, neutral colourway mm. in all our taupes and greys from the pure wool worsted yeah. um, range of colours. So that would fit in with most people's interiors. Yeah, that's and very Scandinavian. It is, is yes. It? That's been my inspiration really, has been the textures and motifs of Scandinavia and Northern oh. Europe. Um, and Fair Isle, even though this isn't actually what we call a a fur aisle, it's the it's been achieved by slip stitch, which mm. for, for beginner knitters is going to be so much easier to achieve than trying all the complications and headaches of um, weaving the yarn at the back. So we're getting more of a fur aisle inspired yeah. look. Actually. So actually just kind of um, going on that, um, talking about that, when you're doing slip stitch, um, you actually are only using one colour? Yeah, uh, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, so one colour, well, it's usually the same to each Row, two, two, two rows. Two yeah. row repeats, mm -hmm. yes, all the way through. So you um, end up at the right side every time. You do, time, yeah. yes, yes. And, you have, and the, the back is neat, there's no floats or anything, which mm. might catch if you were actually mm. using it as a blanket. So I had to bear that in mind too. Mm. But we still have motifs, um, simple texture and lace, which, which we sort of covered in the first knit along, but making them more into recognisable motifs mm. and um, just another lace little heart here which um famous I, for your heart yeah well it, i think they just look so great in in, mm. in projects like this mm. um which introduces a different way of, of making the lace holes which mm. we've done a tutorial mm. for as well where did you learn to knit martin um well i learned at a very early age at uh, what during my time at infant school mm. um from a very inspirational teacher mrs cross who isn't that so, interesting? You still remember her? Oh yes, yeah. yes, after all these years, yes, um, 50 years plus later. Um, if it wasn't for Mrs Cross, you wouldn't be sitting I here? I wouldn't be, no, no, if it wasn't for her encouragement, no, mm. I, I probably wouldn't be. But uh, yeah, she really believed that boys and girls should mm. learn to knit, so cook everything, which of course isn't the case these days, I think. So, no. yes from that generation who... Uh, so did you, because you, you, you come from a farming background? I do, yes, yes, yeah. I was brought up on a farm and um, not that I particularly got involved in the day-to-day -day farming, mm -hmm. I, you know, I was more interested in craft at the mm -hmm. time and um, so, um, but I enjoyed, you know, being, being brought up in a farm was, was a joy in itself, being mm -hmm. in the country and, you know, being 
things like Iron Nature and everything. Was it a sheep farm or...? It's a pig and arable farm. Ah. Yes, run by my father and his brother and um, my aunt. Right. Yeah, they ran the farm together. So it sounds like you always knew that you wanted to go into the craft industry. Yes, I think it was much. always on the cards, yeah. definitely. But it wasn't until much later after school that I really you know, decided that's the route I wanted to go down to. I had a few sort of false... Um, leads before that but uh, eventually... so you're not going to tell us what those four oh were. well I, I did work on the farm for a while right. and i worked did various other jobs but eventually i got a place at art school and mm -hmm. the rest is history really. mm, and then so, you worked for artwork yes yeah. then i was at 15 years of artwork which i really honed my craft and mm. learned the basics of pattern writing and, and you really gave them their signature look I yeah I think because as well they were very, you know, they were very encouraging with experimenting with knitting and pushing the boundaries mm. and I actually learned a lot and vice versa. Mm. 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 A... And I remember Martin the, when we first met. Yes. It was funny actually because we were only living around the That's corner from each yes, other in, in, London, in yes. London in that lovely place Peckham. <laughs> It's lovely now. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't when we lived well, in it. 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, but I remember very, very well. Um, Martin and I um, met at a, at a dinner date, well, not a dinner date, a dinner interview, I it suppose was, it was, yes. yes. Informal. Um, yes. For Jaeger, because we were looking for a, a designer for Jaeger, yes, Hamitz. Yes. Um, yeah. And Stephen Sheard and I um, met with Martin. Um, your yeah. name was recommended. I can't quite who recommended you for the job. But I can remember um, sitting up on that balcony yes, in the garden, yes, the and you, yeah, you you um you sold yourself very well, and you were definitely you know hundred percent. We were we believed that you were the right man for the job. Yes, yes. Mm. And here we are, nearly fifteen years later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and believe me, I believe you still have the CV in your arc. Yes, I do see. actually. I'll have a look for it, and um, I'll show it to you shortly. Yes. Shortly, <laughs> amazing. Yes, no, no, fantastic. Mm. Yes. So what um what skill level do you, would you say this um is wrong was? Well, it's I try to aim it still at beginners to um who are um maybe have already picked up some of the um basic skills mm. introduced in the um first uh knit along like the um creating texture with uh knit and pearl stitches the mm. lace here um. Uh, but just moved it on a little bit, uh, just introduced a few more techniques in this mm. part lace mm -hmm. and then really it's the um, fur aisle look or inspired, whatever you want to call it, slip stitch squares yeah. of which we've done tutorials for each one as well as the um, uh, the lace heart and also this, we've got an optional bead heart as well. Oh, that's lovely. Um, so if you didn't want either the, la the lace heart in your throat and you could do a bead heart so mm. we've done a, a tutorial on how to thread the beads on and how to actually knit the, the beads onto the uh, onto the square as well so there's actually five yeah. tutorials in all, in all um and four squares are just what we've already covered mm. in the um, first knit along which should be quite straightforward for... yeah, just to give it that special special touch yes mm. yes i mean it, there's no reason why you can't do both and just intersperse mm. them wherever in in the blanket mm. or there's no reason why you can't make up your own mm. blanket from four or five squares or however many that you you know there might be some you you like more than others so but i'm just thinking as well martin that actually if, if you wanted to just make a cushion out of it yes you, you could, could you could do that or yes you could, you could make it whatever size if you yes. want to do it for your baby's um, exactly. um, pram, cot, yes. cot as, or, a, as, a, as a cot yeah. cover. And four squares would make a, a substantial cushion, so mm. you could pick your four, you know, your four mm. favourite squares to make into a cushion at a later stage and maybe use the idea of the garter um, stripe trim as your backing yeah. for the cushion or whatever. Yes, so, you could do the backing of, of that, yes, couldn't you? you and could. then just do your yeah. backing. So the, so the, you know... It, the, um, it's limitless, really. Mm. Um, or a runner for the end of your bed. Exactly, mm. yes, if you didn't want to, to actually knit the whole width and length of the uh, blanket. So there's lots of scope there for, mm -hmm. for everybody um, to uh, hopefully get some, even if it's just a small cushion, some sort of project from and some enjoyment from it. And um, there's going to be a pattern released each 
Every two weeks. Every two yeah. weeks over, I think, a period of 10, 10 weeks mm -hmm. with some tutorials as well, um, running from the 26th of January, I mm -hmm. believe, uh, and 10 weeks from that date. And also with a competition, which we'll mention in a later video, uh, but also just look out on Facebook and Twitter and Ravelry for more details and more information. And it's um, it's knitted, I don't know, in that lovely pure wool worsted yes, again, isn't it? Yes, it's fantastic. Yes, it, it looks good in anything, yeah. the, the pure wool worsted in. Takes texture. Texture, it takes, takes lace, takes cable, takes colour. It's mm. it's just brilliant and it's very forgiving knitting wise. Mm. It's a real joy, joy to knit with and so versatile. That, uh, and the colour palette, I mean, it's, there's 70 shades. There is there? now, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I've, I've, I've just picked, sort of, I've just given the knitter um, a choice of four tonal colour ways, mm. but there's, you know, yeah, the, world, it's, it's, the it's, world's it's, your oyster mm. when it comes to colours if you want to start creating your own tonal yeah, palette. Yeah, the flag of your country or yes, whatever. Yes, <laughs> whatever, yes, whatever, whatever takes your fancy. Whatever, it's your cup of tea. Yeah, yeah it is, exactly. <laughs> Okay, thanks Martin. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's been great chatting to you today and um, it's great to be able to introduce another knit along. Brilliant, yes, yeah. yes, hope all goes well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.